Hey everyone, it's Ashley Bissett Summerall with Telltale TV. Today I am super excited to be joined by Melora Hardin um, to talk about her upcoming film Clock, which is going to be premiering on Hulu at the end of this month. Melora, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Um, the trailer for this movie looks incredible and terrifying. Tell me a little bit about it. It is definitely a, a challenging ride. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, it's, it's really a story about sort of a woman who has a perfect life uh, and loves, loves everything about her life um, and doesn't have the urge to have children. And so she um, she goes to a, uh, a kind of experimental kind of clinic that's very edgy run by uh, me, <laughs> um, a doctor who um, claims to be able to fix your biological clock. Okay, okay, okay. Which sounds like an interesting sort of psychological thing. And then I see sort of the horror element coming into it. Um, <laughs> Is that something, is that, is that you? Are you the? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to give everything away, but, um, but, you know, basically I think that my character is able to affect change, um, but there are things that go wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, I'm not so, I'm not so certain that my character really knows about those things. Um, I think that, you know, I think that uh, it's really a conversation about the pressure societally and familial pressure and uh, peer pressure uh, that, you know, that women feel in this particular, this woman feels in the, in this movie to feel like she should want to have children, that she should have children. And, um, uh, and so I think that desire to, you know, conform um to that idea is so front and center that she's trying to not pay attention to the other things that might be not going so well <laughs> interesting interesting because it is I, I, when I first started reading about it I thought what a relatable idea I mean it's a really relatable story right mm -hmm. it is yeah it's, it's a really interesting I think a really kind of a feminist take on it's very fresh sort of conversation. I've never seen that conversation had by women about this, um, this sort of pressure that women can feel to have children. I, it's funny because I'm just the exact opposite. The, the director, Alexis Jack, Jack now, and I just came back from the Overlook Festival in New Orleans where we did a Q and A um, where the film premiered. And one of the things that, you know, Alexis was saying was like, Melora is like, you know, She's like, has two ch children. She loved being a mom. Like she said, like, yeah. So for me, it was, it, it, you know, but I still, you know, really can relate to the idea that there is a pressure. For me, it was always a natural, like I dreamed about having kids from the time I was like five, you know, like I, I always wanted kids and was lucky enough to be able to have them. So, but I really did like that there was this very, uh, I thought, fresh conversation around um, you know, just what the, what it is, what it is to be, a, to be a woman and, and, and all the different expectations that women can have. And for some people, it's overwhelming to feel like they, you know, should have a child when that's not really their thing. You know, other people are fine just accepting that, like, I don't really want that, but some people do, I think, feel really a strong pressure in this particular case. The story is you know, it's a Jewish family and sort of the end of the lineage and she's kind of the last in the family line. And so it's, it's, it's really good. I think really, really interesting conversation. Okay. So what, to, so you're the doctor, mm -hmm. um, you're running a clinical trial. What else can you kind of tell us about your character? Um, I mean, I think that, you know, Dr. Simmons is very, I think she's very well-meaning. I think she's incredibly smart. She's really cutting edge. I think she really thinks she's doing a good thing for women. This is something that women really want. And I think she sees in, um, in Diana's character, I think she sees someone that is going to be an excellent candidate for her, for her trial. And I think she feels this is really going to 
help a lot of women. You know, that's really what she's coming at it as. And I think feels somewhat maternal towards all the women that she's, that she's there, you know, helping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what was it that made you excited to be a part of the project? Just like from the beginning, like what drew you to it from the start? Well, I had seen Alexis's short film, which is also on Hulu. It's called Clock. Um, and um, I thought the short was really scary and really spooky and weird. And I just felt like she had a real vision. You know, there was just something really clear in her voice of that short film that she really wanted to say. Mm -hmm. And um, and I read the script and I just felt like, yeah, you know, I, wa I want to be part of this, as I said, this sort of fresh and new kind of way to talk about something that I've never seen talked about this particular way. And I thought it was really fun kind of couched in the kind of psychological thriller slash horror landscape. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm excited to watch it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so a little nervous. To, I'm not a big horror person, you know, so it, it's yeah. like, sometimes I get a little, but the story seems so captivating. I feel like yeah, I'm not a big horror person either. And it's, it's, it's more, it's more psychological thriller than horror. I mean, if you're going to it for, for horror, there's like a cup, there's a couple of like really scary moments, but mm -hmm. I would say if you're going to it for horror, you're, you're, you're not going to, you know, that you're not going to find that with this movie, you, you know, it's, um, it's much more intelligent and intellectual than that. Not to say that some horror can't be very, complex because I think it can be but um in any case yeah but definitely don't show it to your nine-year-old daughter <laughs> <laughs> I, I will keep that in mind <laughs> it would not that would not be a good thing I don't know that would not be a good thing <laughs> I'm tentative to show it to my 18 year old and 21 year old daughters <laughs> so, uh <-huh. laughs> um well, what was the most fun thing about it for you? Did you have any favorite kind of moments in playing the character, like behind the scenes? Well, I mean, you know, this was Alexis's first film and, um, you know, I'm a director also. And I think just being, just being there and, and watching somebody blossom and watching somebody move through their first time mm -hmm. with something. And, and she just was, you know, she, she did a wonderful job and, um, and I just think it's it's just really lovely to be a part of part of that of somebody's kind of evolution into a dream, you know, stepping into a dream that they have, and and being really, um, really ready to do that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I it's like I don't there when Diana's character goes into um, into a tank, she kind of has some hallucinations, mm -hmm. and <laughs> there there there's some kind of like pretty strong visuals um and when I came onto the set my first day on the set it was we were doing that that sort of hallucinogenic sequence so um <laughs> it was it was a pretty funny uh way to start the movie with you know with this uh prosthetic baby that was like sort of you know swinging at like a clock and like just very uh very strange you know bloody you know like <laughs> Alexis is like welcome <laughs> I was like, and then you're in it <laughs> all right let's get going <laughs> oh that's amazing um, okay so you also coming up for you you're reprising your role um for the monk reunion movie yes, yes. Has, has that started filming yet or no we start in like a couple of weeks a few weeks okay. yeah we start okay. filming. Mm -hmm. how how do you feel about it what's it oh i'm be? so excited i i mean i loved i loved my time on that show i love you know tony shalhoub is such a, he's such a wonderful actor but he's also just such a wonderful person he's just so He's so wonderful to work with, lovely, grounded, real, kind, you know, connected person. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to seeing Tony. It's been a lot, it's been a while since I've seen him. So that I'm really looking forward to. The director, Randy's Disc, who also I've known for so many years, also just a lovely, lovely guy. I mean, everybody involved in the in the shoot, um, there everyone is just really, really good people. And I know we're all super, super excited to come together and you know, just enjoy each other's company.
So yeah, absolutely. yeah, the script is really, the script is really fun. <clears throat> I think the fans are going to be satisfied and happy. And I, I obviously cannot talk to you without also talking to you a little bit about the office, <laughs> um, especially with how pervasive it is right now. I think I, I just like earlier this week saw a TikTok and it was the clip of the dinner party scene. I mean, it's just, it's still everywhere. What yeah. does that feel like to be, it, it's such a legacy. It's amazing to be, yeah, to be a part of a show that's sort of, you know, uh, become a, an iconic, you know, kind of American comedy that, um, you know, and because of streaming, it's just had this incredible life that is extraordinary, you know? Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, how, I don't know how that happened. Right. I just, it was just a lucky situation, you know, because when I did, when I did that, I was a guest star on the pilot, possible recurring character that became uh, a series regular in season two. So um, I was, you know, yeah, <laughs> that was just a wonderful, wonderful, lucky, uh, luck of the draw kind of thing. And then when you think about the things, other things that happened, that if those things had panned out the way that they were meant to pan out, you know, the office wouldn't have happened for me because I would have been on a different tra trajectory, you know, so, so other things that, that, yeah, looked like they were going to come through. Like a lot of people asked me about Back to the Future because I was, you know, going to be doing Back to the Future. But I think if I'd done Back to the Future, you know, I would have been on a different trajectory. So um, that was kind of, I don't know, perfect for me. <laughs> and I Everything kind of works out the way <laughs> yeah, everything everything works out the way that it that it should. So, it's, yeah. Uh, well, and she's such an iconic character. I I, I think it's so interesting that you know <laughs> she wasn't necessarily supposed to be a part of it for as long as she was, and yet, gosh, I mean, yeah. When we think about immediately. Yeah. No, I mean, I think you know Steve Carell and and Greg Daniels and I. I remember on the pilot, the set of the pilot, we really felt that there was a spark between Michael and Jan. And we just thought like, there's something that's like oddly, weirdly off, but right about them. We got to like, if we get an opportunity to come back and do this, you know, more, we should, we should explore that. I think we all, that was where the seed was planted. And I think we all thought that would be a fun idea. Oh, so that's we did. <laughs> <laughs> any like, I, I mean, I know, you know, you probably get asked questions like this all the time, but any, favorite memories from filming the show anything that just stands out to you as yeah I mean so many I mean there's so many but I would I would say the dinner party episode was you know just a, just an amazingly fun episode to film I also think that the cocktail party was really fun it was the first time and really the only time I think Jan ever said that's what she said in the show <laughs> um and it was a very funny very you know I just loved that I think there's something about the cocktail party episode that's very it's it's very uh that's interesting because those two episodes uh jj abrams directed the cocktail party episode and paul feig directed the um the dinner party episode and i think that's part of why those for me are also so memorable both of those guys are really really wonderful to work with and um and they were just written you know uh really really incredible writing to those 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 two episodes in particular the whole show was written so well but um yeah so I yeah to have a lot of a lot of incredible memories from that show of course yeah awesome. many, many. <laughs> <laughs> and so many that stand out in the culture I mean it's just I think that's uh, people rewatch it for comfort and you know it's 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 a really interesting thing sounds yeah. like the, um clock might not be a comfort thing <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah I will not say that that is going to fall into my category <laughs> definitely not no if but people definitely are looking, looking to clock to laugh you're going the wrong place people <laughs> <laughs> maybe watch the maybe watch clock and then then watch tune the, in office the office that's right yeah right <laughs> just to relax <laughs> yes. yes that would be the way to do it awesome well thank you again so much for taking Aww. the time this was lovely I really appreciate it well so nice to talk to you too have a wonderful day you too thanks